Jamesy, it's another sunny, sunny day here for the Clare side, a, a fantastic performance. Yeah, I mean, again, Jonathan, I, I don't know if Clare were at their best this evening. Um, certainly a nervy first half. I think Watford had 12 wides, um, and Jamie Byrne, I think, flashed, you know, what was probably a good goal chance wide, you know, after a bit of sloppy, I think, defending at the back from Clare. So, certainly, I think Donny Brian Lowe will be particularly happy with aspects of the performance, especially in the first half. But, you know, it was all about just was getting a result and you know it was always going to be a specific potential banana skin um, you know Watford had to show something I thought they did in the first half but really I mean the game was over from a long way out and Kel Mines is sending off us because really for me you know that was a death knell for Watford I suppose we have such high expectations you know the, given some of the absolute humdingers we've witnessed but this is a game that I thought maybe promised a lot you know you have the edge you have the two times you have Waterford do or die uh, it's safe to say that in the first quarter especially it didn't really get to life never flowed um, and I don't think John Keenan had one of his better games you know it was very very stop start um, you know again I suppose look at there was maybe a bit of need at times uh, but there was no flow to the game in the first half and you know I thought John maybe could have maybe let it flow a bit more at times maybe given the advantage um, but yeah it was certainly you know we've had three I think the Clare Water tip game was a cracker obviously Clare Limerick was an epic and Cork tip I mean, it was wild in terms of the finish, you know, last Saturday night in, in, in Port Even Look at this game, came nowhere close to, to hitting those same heights. Um, I mean, had Watford, though, converted some of those opportunities in the first half, uh, it might have been a different game. But you can't afford to shoot 12 wides, arguably, in a championship match over 70 minutes. And I think that 11 or 12 on the board at half time, um, you simply can't do that. And, and those wides sucked the energy, I suppose, you know, and the momentum out, out of the team. And Watford couldn't afford to have you know, an off day on the shooting front like they had in that first half. And as I said, you know, the, the sending off was unfortunate. I mean, again, you know, I think it probably was a second yellow card. Caleb again, will probably be disappointed with himself in terms of the first one was probably needless. You know, I think, you know, they got there free. Um, and I think John Keane ended up throwing, throwing in the ball. So a bit of a specific discipline in, the, in on, on that sense probably cost them. But yeah, overall, I mean, a disappointing championship match um, on a perfect evening for hurling. But looking for Brian Lowe and Clare, it was always a case about getting the two points on the board. They've done that. Yeah, that won't be good enough, I think, against Cork next Sunday. But, you know, they have, they have seven days now, eight days to get ready for that. And, um, you know, two massive games in the Munster Championship, as I said, in seven days' time. You know, Davies' tactics are, you know, rightly praised at times. But I thought on the Clare camp, I thought they tweaked it halfway through the first half and they really just went a bit more direct, kind of sat a bit deeper, and it was the key really to unlocking Waterford in the end. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest about it, I, I, I don't understand a lot of the Waterford tactics. I mean, I thought the matchups, you know, Darrell Lyons on Tony Kelly for me was a was, was a, ma a mismatch. I mean, Darrell Lyons is a midfielder, I think maybe, you know, maybe a half forward, possibly a wing back. Um, but asking him, I mean, there was times when, you know, Tony was maybe one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in the full back line, which was an accident waiting to happen for Waterford, and I, I'd, have, I'd have probably sided him in there and try to get everybody else out. Um, and certainly, you know, Darrell Lyons to me was asked to do a job tonight that, you know, he's probably not comfortable doing. I saw Connor Prunty, you know, the Waterford fullback bombing forward on, on, on for Waterford puck outs in the opposition half of the fields. Connor Gleeson, the same thing at, at, at times. I don't understand that. Um, I don't understand the logic of it. Um, I, I think maybe it, it, the Waterford players are confused. What's their identity now? I mean, after. You know, Desi got that opening point inside the, I suppose, the opening 30 seconds of the second half. You're saying, OK, maybe we're going to see a bit of fight from Waterford here. I think after 20 minutes, they had two points in the second half and 12 points on, on, on the board in total. That's not going to get it done. And, you know, Desi Hutchinson, who's a player we all admire, fantastic player. You know, but again, did he get any ball on the edge of the D that he could look to attack or go at that clear back line? I don't think he did. And, you know, he, he fought the fight right to the end, you know, out on the middle of the field. But... I said, I just don't know if Watford have an identity. Um, you know, no one likes to see a, a county that have been, I suppose, look at, you know, so entertaining over the last 25 years. I mean, you know, Watford, their best is that, you know, free flowing, off the cuff stuff. And they still have players that can play that game. Maybe not as many as they had in their, in their prime with John Milan and Dan and, you know, Paul Flynn and all those, and all those guys. But I, I don't know if they have a clear identity at the moment. And I think there's an element of confusion about the, the tactics. I don't think they're necessarily playing to their strengths. And, um, you know, certainly, there's a lot of soul searching. I think maybe, you know, going on in Watford at the moment. Obviously, the miners in the 20s, you know, didn't win a game in their championships. And there's a genuine concern about where Watford hurling is at now. And I don't think any of us, um, you know, 
take any joy or satisfaction in that at the moment. And uh, it's just as a disappointing. You know? the, the puck outs in the second half as well, I thought Clare totally squashed the life from them. They won a session in the road and then Tony Kelly hit form. You know, we'll talk about the goal in the first three. But that spell in the third quarter where you touched on, they just said, this is our game. And they literally put the foot on the neck. Yeah. And um, again, you know, Watford didn't seem to you know, have a coherent strategy where, you know, they, they could, as I said, get the ball to the shooters, you know, in in, in, in places where they could maybe do, do do damage. And, you know, two points, as I said, in 20 minutes hurling is, is, is not going to cut it in the Munster Championship. And, you know, at a time when you're you're behind, you're chasing the game, um, you know, there was one spell there with maybe 10 minutes to go when I think there was one Watford forward in the clear half of the field, five or six clear defenders. And, as I said, I, I, I just don't know if, if, if the Watford players have a clear identity or, or, or you know if they're clear about what they're trying to trying to do and um, I think that's reflected maybe in the court game and it was reflected certainly in, at, at times in the second half to, tonight let's focus in on your home county the banner it's another big statement you know so important to follow up that Limerick victory with a you know another tangible world back in almost in their own hands now as well that's probably equally as impressive today that grind out that victory than the high-flying one that we witnessed down the Gaelic grounds yeah, I, I mean, as I said, it, it wasn't by any means a champagne performance, but you know, you, you look at what did they win by 13 points. You know, it was always, as I said, going to be a, a real potentially dangerous game for them, a real banana skin, because Waterford, you know, in the position they were in, had to come out fight, and you, you felt that, you know, with the time to prepare, that, you know, Davy would get the matchups right, and they'd have put a lot of thought into it. But, um, you know, Clare certainly below par. I mean, I don't think that performance would be good enough, for example, next weekend against against Cork. They still did what they had to do. I mean, it's still an, a, a relatively impressive tally. They took the goal chance as well. Mark Rogers again hit the post with another goal chance. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, at plenty to work on. But, you know, on a night when, you know, Brian would have bitten your hand off, I think, to take that 13-point win before he came down here. And at the end of the day, there's two points on the board. Now let's get the focus ready for Cork. One performance, though, that was you know glittering like a wizard out there at times. Tony Kelly and his hook back in the first half to the opening goal probably just summed up the, literally the full package. Jonathan, that was a pivotal moment in the game. Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, Watford bearing down on goal. I can't remember was it Neil Montgomery, but Tony back there got a great flick on the ball. And it, as I said, it, it ended up, you know, 20 seconds later, um, Dave Fitzgerald made a really great decision on the ball. F- beautiful first time hand pass um, into Gallivan and in fairness to Ian you know he finished it finished it well so yeah Tony look at you know Tony's never afraid to get his hands dirty um, and again you know I thought he was he was good tonight without maybe bringing his best stuff he was still you know good on the freeze um, you know looked again like you know any time he got one on one situation with Daryl Lyons um, you know that he was he was going to come out on top and um, certainly you know good to see Tony back in, in, in the rich fan that we're going to need him if we're going to as I said go further in this championship you know, it's a far cry since that opening round defeated against Tipperary. You look at the balls, look at the amount of kids out here. The team will take them a while to get into the dressing rooms. Clare Hurland back, you know, on the underage success as well on the on their horizon. It's in a good space. It is, Jonathan. There's a lot of positivity around the county at the moment. Obviously, the minors. You know, we've we've only won five Munster minor championships. You know, the lads won it last last Tuesday night. You know, really good team, great management, good bunch of players working hard. The twenties are in Limerick. In the Munster final on, on Monday night, came down here and you know had a really hard fought battle with Tip, um, a margin of victory that, that, that probably flattered them. But again, great work been done by Brendan Bugler, Terence Fahey, and the lads, the lads there. So, you know, look at I suppose Brian is the figurehead at the moment. You know, he's he's over the flagship team and a guy that there's massive respect for. And look at Clare Hurling is in a good place, but it's 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 hard work. Um, you know, the clubs are putting it in, um, but great to to see that we're we're getting the results and. Uh, as I said, the 20s in the Munster final, the minors in the Lauren semi final. Uh, very, very big week, obviously. Then with Cork coming to tennis on, on Sunday for Clare Hurling. Um, you know, so, yeah. And, and again, as I said, like Watford, you know, by contrast, you know, haven't had that success and have really, really struggled with this round robin format at Munster. And, uh, you know, it has to be a concern for them. And, you know, as I said, there, there are an awful lot of genuine, really good people in Watford Hurling. Um, but I, I, I just don't know. Uh, if the direction they're going in at the moment, you know, is the right one. If they're if they're clear about where they're going, what their identity is, and I think that's something they have to they have to address and, and, and get right. We better go before we get swarmed here. It's a great day for Clare, and it's all all set up to now with that massive court game. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, like if Limerick went out and get to six points, um, Clare simply have to have to get a result then uh, next weekend. I mean, Clare lose to Cork next Sunday, they're depending on someone else to do them a, do them a favour. Um, so. You know, it, it is a massive game, massive game in Ennis. And, uh, you know, Clare have already lost at home once. They won't want to lose the second game. But Cork have impressed me. 
um, came tennis in the league, got a got a result there when you know Clare looked like they'd they'd won the match. Uh, even Cork, there was no sense of panic in, in Parky Keeve last Saturday night, five or six points down deep into the second half. They kept doing the right thing, and there's a lot of pace and athleticism in that Cork side. And you know, I, I think Clare are going to have to play better than they did tonight to come out on top. So yeah, yeah, still loads to play for the Munster Championship. Well, we certainly can't wait. Thanks so much again, James. Cheers, John.